I'm Stephanie Condon with CBSNews.com, and I'm here with John Taylor, President and CEO of the National Community Reinvestment Coalition, to talk about uh, the latest uh, reports about Standard & Poor's, the powerful credit ratings agency. Uh, John, thank you for joining us. Oh, I'm glad to be here, Stephanie. Uh, now, the New York Times reports today that the Justice Department is investigating whether S&P uh, improperly rated mortgage-backed securities ahead of the financial crisis. And uh, this, of course, comes uh, in the wake of S&P's downgrade of U.S. debt. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, reports say... That'll teach them. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's actually what I wanted to ask you. Mm -hmm. You know, reports say it's uh, not ret not um, because of Retaliation. the Retaliation, yeah. And, um, you know, but nevertheless, it does come after this. Uh, does this make it, um, you know, is there a chance that this is some sort of uh, retribution or does it make it harder for the Justice Department to do its job in this context? You know, I don't know. I, I, it's a, a different pay grade and I'm not a fly in the wall in justice, but uh, uh, it, it is interesting that the, 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 this whole justice investigation gets denounced around the time shortly after they've downgraded the U.S. And, and the other two rating agencies, Fitch and Moody's, of course, uh, keep the U.S. at a triple A rating. So, right. And I haven't heard anything about them, they being investigated. But I really think they all could be. I, I, I don't want the story to be lost in, like, is this retribution as opposed to is this merited? Is it warranted? And, you know, frankly, as somebody who has uh, an organization that's filed complaints with the SEC and with HUD about the role of the rating agencies in slapping these AAA ratings on what was a lot of junk securities, junk loans, uh, it's high time that Justice and others stepped up to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at the flip side of the coin in terms of motivation, mm -hmm. uh, some say that <laughs> S&P may have been motivated to downgrade U.S. debt uh, as a sort of compensation for its failures ahead of the financial crisis. Uh, what's your take on that? As a, as, a, as a compensation for its own failures? To sort of uh, bolster its reputation. Oh. Uh, it's a, it's a dangerous gambit, gambit if that's what they were doing, uh, for the very reason we just talked about is the weather, you know, ticking off the United States government uh, and stepping out of your, your group of rating agencies to, to do this sort of thing. I think S&P, I mean, they did a paper in 08 themselves where they looked back at, uh, at a lot of the mortgages they had securitized and, and questioned and, and had to re-rate them and questioned whether their system was accurate. Uh, I met with them actually in 07 and, uh, and I was very concerned about a lot of the uh, mortgages that they were rating, securities that they that were being slapped with a triple A rating, and I was trying to understand from them. I went to went to their building in Wall Street and uh, met with the executives there and had a lot of questions. And I was uh, shocked to learn that they don't do due diligence. I mean, they actually said that when I because I I theorized that they had this entire floor in their S and P building made up of these you know geeky actuarial types who are sitting there at computers just analyzing these mortgages and loans from from soup to nuts to come out with what the rating was and instead you know they showed me this form that had a checklist on it uh, for the banks to fill out that would say you know is this mortgage low documentation is it an adjustable rate is it have a piggyback loan on it does it have a balloon payment that all the toxic conditions which were acceptable you just check the box and then you mix those with a lot of other securities, and then if you weren't quite pleased with your rating, you could always enhance the rating by buying insurance or whatever. But the bottom line was, I, the bank, who was bringing these packages of loans to you, the rating agencies, to S&P, I was paying your salary. Right. So the way it worked was, like, now rate these loans, but uh, I need a good rating on this, and if you can't give me what I need, I'm going over to Fitch or Moody's. I mean, it, it, the... the the conflict of interest, the inherent conflict of interest where they were paying you to get a rating just really worked against the interests of consumers and investors. And so uh, do you think that last year's rewrite of the financial rules with the Dodd-Frank Act um, addre uh, sufficiently addressed that at no. all? No, because I mean there, there's a number of things in there that have to do with more transparency and reporting and looking at how they, how they rate these loans and so on. Uh, but the, the inherent 
conflict of interest, which is the investment banks paying their salary, is still in place. There needed to be a system set up where the rating agencies didn't, couldn't feel like if I don't respond the way this uh, investment bank wants me to respond in terms of the rating with all these uh, mortgages, that, I, that, I, that I'm going to be penalized by them. There, there, there needed to be a way of perhaps putting all these investors put their money into a pool and, and they, they just, there's just more of an arm's length transaction between the payment and the rating. And that wasn't accomplished in Dodd-Frank. Some good things were, and they haven't been implemented yet. I mean, it's up to the uh, SEC to start creating the, the mechanism and the, and the uh, even though the law went into effect on July 21st, the mechanisms for implementing what was in Dodd-Frank to clean up this industry and make it more transparent, that's, that remains to be, right. to be done. One of the things they are considering is creating a board, possibly, that would be in charge of uh, delegating which agencies rate which um, firms, and um, huh. that's supposed to erase some of the conflict of interest. Um, do you think there's potential there to, you know, first of all, do you think it would happen that the SEC would adopt some of those rules, and do you think it would be effective? I don't know. I mean, I've file complaints with the SEC to try to clean up these things and they've been pretty unresponsive and you, you hear a lot of we're understaffed, we're overworked, um, you know, so I, uh, unless that agency is going to grow in capacity. The, the concept of, of having um, uh, one investment bank being assigned, assigned to one rating agency, so in other words, they, if they don't like that rating, they can't jump to another, or they can't say, no, I don't want to work with them, I'd rather work with this. I think that's a good idea on his face. Uh, I, uh, I, I, more than anything, I think what we need to do is have some sort of independent third party review of, uh, and, and there's some of that in Dodd-Frank, but to go into these agencies and see if, the, if indeed the due diligence is being done to ensure that the ratings really match the risk uh, that 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 exists in these in these uh, securities and these mortgages. All right. Uh, well, thanks very much for joining us, Mr. Taylor. Sure. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Washington Unplugged. If we don't expand our imagination, we have to take the game.